the chances are you or someone you know is taking Siroxat. It's almost overtaken Prozac as Britain's most popular antidepressant. Prescribed for everything from anxiety to stress, Siroxat has transformed the lives of millions. But for some, the happy pills have a darker side. If I'd known what I would have, have had to go through, there is no way that I would have started taking the drug. Internet chat rooms are packed with complaints from people who claim they're addicted to Siroxat. Others say it can be a prescription for violence, suicide and self-harm. I was burning myself with cigarettes. I was taking the blades out of disposable razors and sort of cutting my arms and, and my chest. If they aren't the right drug for you, they can cause a range of problems. They can make you suicidal, they can throw you into a state of mental turmoil. And even if they are the right drugs for you, in some instances, they can leave you hooked. After just two days on Siroxat, one man slaughtered his family. He shot and killed the three women that he loved most in the world, his wife, his daughter, and his nine-month-old granddaughter. The company that makes Siroxat has long known about safety concerns. Tonight, the evidence that's remained under lock and key here in Essex for 15 years. I'm 22, I live in London. I've been taking Siroxat for four and a half years. Um, it was originally prescribed to me to stop me having panic attacks. These are them. Um, I've wanted to come off it for quite a few years now, but I, when I stopped taking it, I was so ill that I had to start taking it again, and doctors kept telling me that it was impossible to be addicted to them. Helen Kelsell's problems began as a teenager. Beneath her vivacious shell, her confidence was crumbling. Siroxat was supposed to be her cure. I've been having panic attacks, um, and I was also doing my A-levels at the time, and I probably was a bit depressed as well, um, but mainly the panic attacks, because I'd had some quite serious ones and I had ended up in hospital a couple of times um, and I didn't really know what they were and at that time I didn't really know how to do research into your own medical things and I trusted what the doctor said so I um, started taking them and uh, that's how it's been from there. I feel really crap. Um, shocks. Head shock's really throwing me off. Headaches, muscle pains, sweating, trembling. As I take each step, there's a shock in, her, in my head that's completely throwing me off balance. Using a video camera, Helen's been keeping a unique record of her long-running struggle with Siroxat. She's been trying to wean herself off the drug since the start of the year but it's not easy. The tablets are so potent, she can't just stop taking them. That makes her feel too ill. The only way she can make small enough reductions in dose is to chop the tablets up. The withdrawal symptoms have forced Helen to miss much of her university course this year. She's in danger of failing her degree. Going into my final year of my master's degree, I can't afford to take time off because I'm ill and because I'm getting these shocks and this nausea. I've already had enough problems with university that's come about from from this um, withdrawal, and I can't carry on like that. 
Siroxat is second only to Prozac as the nation's favorite antidepressant. It's one of the drugs that has revolutionized the treatment of mental illness. Taking Siroxat can transform people's lives, but stopping it can be a nightmare. Hello, medication helpline. The Maudsley Hospital in London runs a national information service for people taking psychiatric medicines. Trouble coming off Siroxat is the number one complaint from callers. Doctors too report far more withdrawal problems from patients on Siroxat than on any other drug. Thank you very much for calling. Bye. If a patient is to stop taking Siroxat um, suddenly, then usually they would uh, quite soon become quite anxious. They may feel uh, very dizzy and unsteady on their feet. Um, often people experience electric shock sensations. Uh, they may also have a fever and feel generally uh, unwell. And they also may experience mood uh, changes um, or, or very vivid nightmares, for example. The information leaflet that accompanies Siroxat says these symptoms are not common and will generally disappear within a few days of stopping the drug. It says, remember, you cannot become addicted to Siroxat. Not unreasonably, perhaps, many think that means they can stop taking Siroxat whenever they want. Although people might suspect that the, this, the effects that they're getting are, are caused by stopping the medication, um, very few are aware that that might be the case. Very few have been forewarned that they might experience these kinds of symptoms. When the doctor said this is going to help and it's not got any downside, which is effectively what they say, I just thought, oh, that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Now I realise that couldn't really have been more wrong. Helen isn't the only one. On the internet, she's found hundreds of others who had no idea what to expect when coming off Siroxat. And like Helen, many have had withdrawal symptoms that are worse than their original illness. Visual distortions, almost like hallucinations. Small tingle, rapidly pass through your upper torso. Mm -hmm. This guy saying, I find the worst side effect is the feeling of sickness and giddiness. Like you're roaring drunk and the world is spinning. Somebody else saying, don't try to come off it cold turkey, it's not recommended. And that must be so, so disturbing. Siroxat is one of a family of five antidepressants known as SSRIs. They're the wonder drugs of the last decade, offering a cure for everything from anxiety to depression to phobias. Millions of people have been helped by them, and they're extremely popular with doctors. They're so simple. You don't need to be a genius to prescribe antidepressants, uh, and they get seven out of ten people better in a, in a couple of months, and they're not even very expensive. Cheap, effective, and apparently even Siroxat's withdrawal symptoms can be beneficial. Interestingly, I've actually found the withdrawal effect to be quite handy for a few people. I've had several patients who've come to see me in clinic and said, uh, I actually sort of stopped taking my antidepressant doc because I thought I didn't need it. But after a day or so, I felt a little twitchy, a little uncomfortable, and it made me realise I did need it. But and wouldn't fact, that just be the withdrawal effect? Well, exactly. That's the withdrawal effect that they had noticed for a day or so, and it had prompted them to go back on the pills which is very helpful. Helpful or not, the drug's maker, GlaxoSmithKline, is satisfied patients know exactly what to expect before they start taking Siroxat. Siroxat is a generally well-tolerated medicine that has been used extensively around the world over the last 10 years. As with all serious medicines, all prescriptions medicines, um, Siroxat does have side effects, but these are clearly stated in uh, the information that's made available to doctors and to patients. Many patients, though, complain the information isn't clear. They say they've been misled by the company's reassurance 
that Siroxat is not addictive. Because of this, thousands of people, both here and in America, are now taking legal advice. Your leaflet says, remember, you cannot become addicted to Siroxat, but that's not true, is it? Yes, it is true. There is no reliable evidence that Siroxat can cause addiction or dependence. And this has been borne out by a number of independent clinical experts, by regulatory authorities around the world, by the Royal College of Psychiatrists, and a number of other groups. If people can't stop taking a drug when they want to stop taking it, they're addicted, aren't they? No, that's not correct. The definition of addiction uh, is not as you describe it. Addiction is characterised by a number of different um, uh, criteria, well, which includes craving, which includes increasing the dose of drug to get the same effect, um, uh, and a number of other features. Well, and these are not, not exhibited the, um, by Siroxat. That's not with respect what the Oxford English Dictionary says. It says addiction is having a compulsion to take a drug the stopping of which produces withdrawal symptoms. Now, we've spoken to plenty of people who say they're compelled to take Siroxat because stopping it produces withdrawal symptoms. If you use that... They're addicted. If you use that limited description of addictive, then most prescription medicines could be defined as addictive. <laughs> Beta blockers, this which are used the for the treatment... This is usage of the word. This is what people are understanding addicted to mean and you're misleading them in the patient leaflet by saying they can't become addicted. No, we are not misleading them. The information in the patient leaflet and in the information we supply to doctors is based on fact. It's based on data which is generated during clinical trials and during uh, the, uh, the marketing of the product over the last 10 years. They should be framing these things in language that patients will understand. Now what most patients will understand that, that Siroxat is not a addictive means is that if I take this drug I can halt it and I won't have a problem halting it. Well that's not true. This is my final week of having one day where I get a whole tablet so next week I'll be on half a tablet every day and to be honest, I'm really dreading it. The kids are fine. Why are you always so anxious? Dad, you're always so tense. Are you mad at me? Honey, you can't keep losing sleep. It makes you so irritable. You worry constantly. Can't we have a relaxing dinner anymore? Chronic anxiety can affect your relationships, your work, your life. If Siroxat's big here, it's massive in the States. There, it's called Paxil. And unlike in Britain, it can be advertised direct to the public. Well, in 1999, uh, GlaxoSmithKline was estimated to spend around 30 million advertising Paxil in the US. In 2000, this figure was probably risen to a, just around 90 million. And it was money well spent. Sales of the drug earned GlaxoSmithKline nearly two billion pounds last year. Another reason for its phenomenal success is that it's licensed to treat more illnesses than any other antidepressant. Illnesses you may not yet have heard of, like generalised anxiety disorder. GlaxoSmithKline have seeked out indications in these anxiety disorders to, to essentially increase the, 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 the number of patients who can actually take the drugs. So the more patients they get, the more money they get. Precisely. With the help of Paxil, you can see someone you haven't seen in a while. Yourself. Hey, I remember you. On both sides of the Atlantic, criticism of Siroxat is growing. There's evidence that, in the first few weeks of taking the drug, it can make people more anxious. Some research suggests this can happen in up to a quarter of patients, throwing them into a temporary state of mental turmoil. What you've got to realise is by mental turmoil here, we mean a state where people are having thoughts and impulses that they've never had before. Thoughts of harming themselves or harming others. They haven't been having these thoughts at all, but within a few days of been on the drug, they begin to have thoughts like this.